Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be going over a 2001 Russia Math Olympiad problem. This is um, a number theory problem as you will see. So, let's go over the problem first. Find all odd integers n greater than 1. Huh? So we have that n is strictly greater than 1 and it is also an odd integer and such that for any relatively prime divisors a and b of n so therefore a b is equal to 1 and um, a divides um, n and b divides n as well this must imply that uh, a plus b minus 1 is also a divisor of n so um, this implies that a plus b minus 1 also divides our number n. When we would like to find all such numbers n from the conditions given in our problem. So let's, like we do typically um, for any such problem, uh, especially number theory problems, let's try, let's try to first figure out uh, what um, a typical um, solution would look like. So for what values of n will this uh, very strange condition, very unlikely condition I should say, hold? Um, it turns out after some brainstorming that this will hold for all prime powers. Um, so, um, so therefore, um, so for n is equal to p to the 8th power if you will um, so that that con that the, the condition defined in the problems is satisfied for such problems so obviously um, two relatively prime divisors of n namely p to the a would be simply of the forms huh? so um, 1 and p to the power b so that's definitely equal to 1 for um, obviously b strictly less than a. But then that will immediately imply that so uh, 1 plus p to the b minus 1 is simply p to the b. But p to the b uh, would definitely divide p to the a because we already know b is strictly less than a. So therefore all... Um, powers of primes huh? prime powers satisfy the given condition now what i claim next is that this is it so we have no other solution so claim no other um oops solution um besides um uh, powers of primes powers of prime so n being powers of primes we have no other solution and the best way to prove it and we will prove it by contradiction let's assume uh, so let's prove let's assume to the contrary that n satisfies the condition given in the problem and it has at least um well obviously two distinct prime factors at least two distinct um prime factors of which p is the smaller one and um so therefore uh, let let's represent n in the following fashion so let n be equal to p to the r times s so s is kind of like a composite number um such that it it is basically everything else. All the other prime divisors of n will be here, where um, obviously we decided that p is uh, the smallest, the uh, smallest factor of n. Factor of n. Uh, well, okay, so, so far so good. So we can definitely say, so well, obviously by this definition, um, so this implies that um, P divides not S, right? So P does not divide S. P obviously divides N, but it does not divide S. 
and because our number n satisfies the conditions uh, it must imply that uh, so we because uh, obviously p and s are relatively prime they satisfy the condition of the problem so therefore this implies uh, that um, well because uh, let's write that down so because p and s are relatively prime uh, therefore uh, p plus um, s minus 1 in fact uh, divides n now moreover so what i have is the following so if q is um is one of the divisors of s huh? so and obviously q is greater than um let's write that down so q must be greater than p obviously because we established that p is the smallest divisor of n q is another divisor of n so it's part of the s here but it's definitely larger than p so but then observe that s which is divisible by uh, q is strictly less than uh, p plus uh, s minus 1 obviously um, but then that's also strictly less than um, s minus um, oh, sorry s plus q and again that's true because we know q is greater than p but then we know q divides s q divides s plus q but these are kind of in a consecutive order so therefore q does not so that implies q would not divide um uh, p plus s minus one so that's um that's uh, critically important so therefore this implies further that the only uh, prime factors of p plus s minus 1 is in fact p so therefore huh, so further therefore so let's put our three dots so therefore um p if you will so huh, the only prime factors of p plus s minus 1 um being equal being p suggests that this expression can be written as something like p to the power um if you will c so um so that kind of um is the first step in our proof so that's an important result that we will make use of to establish the contradiction that we need to show that there is no other solution besides the power of primes namely that n no such thing will happen n cannot be of the following form so let me move this result to the next page and continue the, our proof so so far we we are given this condition all i did is to rewrite it rearrange it so therefore um we can further proceed that because we know that p to the c uh, which is obviously equal to p plus c minus 1 so let me um uh, let's write that down actually p plus um, sorry p plus s minus 1 i should say uh, from this identity we proved in the previous page because this divides n from the premise here uh, from well from the conclusion of the uh, of the statement condition but then if p to the c divides n then um, obviously p to the c um, plus s minus 1 uh, uh, which is simply equal to uh, 2 times well I can replace simply s with this expression here so therefore I will get 2 times p to the c um, minus uh, p plus 1 minus 1 so I will get 2 to the 2 times p to the c minus p will divide n as well well that's again uh, because of the um, condition of our problem obviously that uh, so you can think of this like our a here this would be like the b so therefore um, if p to the c which obviously divides n and s we know divides n but then s and p has no common factor so they are relatively prime so therefore that expression huh, a plus b minus one huh, so this expression must divide um n and, and furthermore when i factorize this expression here huh, so we can rewrite this p times um 
2p to the c minus 1 minus 1 obviously um so i was able to factor out the p here and this expression inside the parentheses has no p in it so because it has no factors of p in it it must uh, divide s huh? so um let's write that down um because um p divides not uh, 2 to the p uh, 2 times p to the c minus 1 minus 1 and this implies uh, we have that um, 2 times p to the c minus 1 minus 1 divides s here now we have two options either it is the fact that um, this is equal to s huh? or it might be that S has some other uh, factors in it, but because if S has other factors in it, those factors will be greater than P. So therefore, uh, so th that would give us the, f the condition that either, uh, so we have a case where case one, either uh, it is the fact that S is strictly greater than P times uh, two times P to the power C minus one minus one, or case um, 2, if you will, it is the fact that S is exactly equal to 2 times P to the C minus 1 minus 1. So in the first case, um, well, we know this is the fact because as I said again, one more time, if S has other factors in it, those factors will be larger than P, obviously. So for that reason, S must exceed that. Um, in this case, um, after you uh, rearrange the, the terms and do some cancellations, for example, um, let's write that down. So we can replace S with P to the C minus P plus 1, obviously, um, greater than, so let's consider that, 2 times P to the C minus P. The P's will cancel out. So from here, we will get that um, P to the C is strictly less than one but this is obviously a contradiction um, because we know um, p must be greater than one because our number is greater than one so that can't be uh, well and obviously p is, is a prime as well but and in the second case here in this case uh, if you rearrange the terms um, before I rearrange, let me plug in again the value of huh? so this expression for s. So we have p to the c minus p plus 1. So that's equal to uh, 2 times uh, p to the power c minus 1 um, minus 1. And that can equivalently be written as p minus uh, 2 times uh, p to the power c minus 1 minus 1 after we factorize it carefully so again p is a prime greater than 0 so that would suggest this uh, this part is definitely greater than 0 so this must imply that p is in fact equal to 2 um, and this contradicts the very first assumption that our number n is actually an odd number as a result it cannot accept any um, even factors if you will and so 2 is one of those so that that's not possible again we get a contradiction so therefore uh, our claim early on that the only solutions to this problem would be powers of uh, primes is sustained so all solutions are of this form and that solves um, oops, and that solves um, our problem so hope to see you in our next lecture